This week I had been working on my vacuum system for my vapor blasting setup. And I have a couple of long sections of hose. And until this point, I have been just joining them with duct tape to hold them together. And every once in a while, I would just have to replace this duct tape from use and moving them around. What I decided to finally do is make some good use of a 3D printer that I picked up a long time ago. And I never really got around to creating anything with it. I'm going to show you guys how you can make yourself a vacuum system coupler. All right, I'm going to show you guys how I designed this. This was my first part that I created um, using a CAD software. It's not that difficult. If you guys can bear with me fumbling around trying to show you how to use it, you can create one yourself. And the 3D printer I'm using is fairly inexpensive. Never had an opportunity really to make anything useful from it. It's more of a desktop ornament than anything else. But what we're going to be printing is two of these uh, pieces. Here we have two. And we'll be joining them together. So if you notice, the um, quality of the print is, is set to draft. So that it, it has a lot of ridges and a lot of bumps and it prints uh, relatively quick. This is a pretty large part and it prints in just uh, over two hours. One thing that I found interesting, there's a setting for the 3D printer that will produce these little, these little random bumps on the filament as it's making its passes. Um, if you don't have it set to random, what it may do as the machine changes direction, it will change direction always in the same spot, resulting in a, in a, in a line, a seam on one of these points somewhere around here. But this random bump creation that is doing serves us well for this purpose because we can use it to anchor and keep this from uh, coming out of the tube and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the duct tape off of here I'm going to go ahead and join this one so you guys can see what it looks like and all I did to attach both these parts together is just use some uh, Loctite and this is Ultra Gel Control. You can pick this up at Walmart. Uh, I want to say it's about four bucks. Not very expensive. And this is this is how the this is how the coupler works. So I, I designed it to where it will slide over, and then you can you can turn it to lock it into into place. So that's it. So now that one's on. Same thing with this one. We'll turn it to get it in there. And once it's already all the way in. That's it. So now we got a, a leak resistant joint that's not going to come apart. Uh, you can move this thing around. It's not going to come apart. The first thing we're going to need to do is to take some measurements. Depending on the kind of hose that you have, this uh, adapter that I created may or may not work. Uh, that's why we need to take some measurements first. And I'll include the link to the coupler. That way, if you guys have a 3D printer and you don't want to go through the trouble of recreating it on your own, you can just simply download the STL file and print uh, one up yourself. A tool that's a, been a game changer for me has been this digital caliper. If you guys have been looking at one of these things but just never bought one, this thing is fantastic. There is no other way to get an accurate measurement uh, unless you have a tool like this. This, this thing is great. Uh, so I got mine set up for millimeters. It's just uh, simpler for me to use it that way. So just go ahead and turn turn your tool on. And then the first measurement that we're going to take is going to be the outside diameter of this pipe. Now the outside diameter is going to be the, the, uh, the part that the collar is going to slip over. So knowing this exact measurement is going to be important. So to me, it looks like this is a 61 millimeter. So 61 millimeter outside diameter of the pipe. Now the next measurement we need to get is the inside diameter. And for that, we'll use these little hooks on the top here. Okay. So for our inside, our inside diameter is 
51. So we have an outside diameter of 61 and an inside diameter of 51 millimeters. All right, now let's head off to the computer and we'll design our part. We want to start by opening an internet browser. Once your internet is browser is open, head over to the address bar at the top. And what we're going to type in is cad.onshape.com and click enter. And if you haven't been uh, working with Onshape, you'll have to create an account. How you can do that, it's free. Just head over to cad.onshape.com and click on the sign up button here up at the bottom. If you've already created one, just sign in. And once you're signed in, you want to create a new project. In this case, we're going to create the vacuum adapter. I already made it, so it's already in here, but we're going to create it from scratch. Go ahead and click on the Create button. And then click on Document. And give your document a name. So in this case, we're going to call it uh, Internet Test. Click on Create Public Document. And before we get started, we want to change the measurement units from the default inches into millimeters, since we've been taking our measurements in millimeters. How you do that is head over to these three lines here. When you hover your mouse over, it will say Document Menu. Click on Document Menu. Scroll down to where it says Workspace Units. Click on Workspace Units. And over here where it says default length unit, we're going to change this from inch to millimeter. Click on the checkbox and we're all ready to go. First thing we want to do is create a circle sketch. How we do that is we head over to the sketch tool, hover over it, it'll say create new sketch, click on it. And then the next thing that we're going to need to do is select a sketch plane, which is these squares here are the different planes that are available to us. We're going to use the front plane. So we're going to click on front plane. And what you can do at this point is if you see over here, there's a cube on the right. This cube will help us to straighten out this space. So we're right now, since we're working in two dimensions, we don't, we're not really interested unless you want to work with it that way to see all the other dimensions. What I like to do is just select the, click on the cube where it says front and it will straighten out the screen to show us just what we're working with. If you needed to scroll this out, how you would do is you you have a mouse wheel. You could just put your finger on your mouse wheel and then roll your mouse wheel back to uh, zoom it out or up to zoom it in. And if you needed to move this square, what you do is press down the center mouse button, and then while leaving it pressed down, you can slide it to the left, slide it to the right, slide it up or down, okay? So this was just some basic stuff that I had to learn. I couldn't figure out how to get to move this stuff around or zoom in, zoom in or zoom out. But these, these are a few little tips that'll get you going. Next, what we want to do is click on uh, the circle tool up here on the, the toolbar. And there's different selections that you can uh, pick here. If you click the down arrow, one of the selections is center point circle, which means that the circle you're going to draw is going to originate from the center of your work plane, and it will stay centered. If you wanted to make a circle off to the sides, you can pick three point circle, uh, if you were going to put it outside of the plane altogether, you can pick an Eclipse. And this, uh, these are just different selections. Right now, what we're concerned with working with, what I prefer is center point circle, so I'm going to click on that. Now we're going to click on our center point, and when you, you're going to left mouse click. When you left mouse click, you're going to click, and you're going to hold it 
and you're going to drag out from the center. So let's do that. Click down, drag out, and release. Now we've created a circle. And we're going to do that again because we want our, our sleeve to be hollow. So we're going to click once again in the center while holding our mouse button, drag out, and release it. Now we have two circles that are centered. And the next thing we need to do now is give these circles a size. If you remember in our measurements, we determined that the inside dimension of our pipe was 51 millimeters. And one thing that we need to consider is if we're going to have a uh, sleeve inside of a pipe, that sleeve is going to have a thickness. What I've determined is a good thickness is between one and a half to two millimeters. So it's your choice which one you use. For this example, we're going to use the round number. We'll keep it at two millimeters. What this means is that we're going to subtract two millimeters for each side of our sleeve, which is a total of four millimeters. Our original measurement was 51 millimeters. If we subtract four from 51 millimeters, we're left with 47 millimeters. 47 millimeters will be the inside of our object that we're going to create. And that's the size that we want to designate to this inside circle. So we're going to click on it. Uh, sorry, you got to click on the dimensions tool, which is up here on the toolbar. And if you hover over, it'll say dimensions. Click on it. It'll be highlighted in blue, which means that you've clicked on it. Click on the inside circle, and then you're going to, you're either going to Go towards the inside and click again, which will allow you to give this a size. We're going to call it set 47 millimeters because that's what we decided the inside is going to be. Press enter. And now this gives us a 47 millimeter inside circle. The next size that we're going to have to determine is the outside circle. We've already selected the tool. It's already still here in blue. Click on the outside circle. And in this case, we're going to pull our mouse out and click again. Left mouse click is what I'm referring to. And in this one, we're going to give the overall outside measurement of our object. Again, the tube we measured was 61 millimeter outside. If we're going to continue with that same theme of a two millimeter thickness wall around our sleeve, it's going to be two millimeters each size, each side. That gives us an overall material thickness, adding both sides together, of 4. So we're going to have to add 4 to our original measurement of the outside of the hose of 61 millimeter. This will give us 65 millimeters. So that's the size that we're going to put in here, 65. Press on Enter, and that's going to be the outside of our uh, material, the, the object that we're going to make. That's the overall size. Okay, we're finished with this. We're going to click on the check button, the little check mark. So we're, we finished with our sketch. Now, the next thing we want to do is we want to uh, extrude this, this uh, sketch. And how we do that is we're going, to, we're going to click on the sketch. So in this case, we're going to extrude this outside ring. Head over to this Extrude tool. It's up here on the toolbar. And if you hover over, it'll say Extrude. Click on it, and then it's going to give us uh, a, an extrusion. Now, we want our sleeve, uh, the thickness of our the base of the material of the sleeve, to be about 2 millimeters. So we're, we're cons we have a consistent theme. It's 2 millimeter wall thickness. 2 millimeter uh, thickness on the base of the sleeve. So we're going to just continue with that. We'll come in here, type in 2, press enter, and now we have a 2 millimeter thick, what looks like a, a plastic washer is what this looks like. Okay. We're going to click on the check mark, uh, the checkbox, and now we have our extruded base of our project. Now, the next thing we want to do is 
we want to define the outside collar. And how we're going to do that is click on the sketch tool. It's going to ask us to select a plane. We're going to select the front of this extruded shape. We're going to click on it. And then again, like we did at the beginning, I'm going to click on the front of this cube over here to the right so it will straighten the shape out for us. And here we are looking at the front of our extruded surface. Now what we want to do here is we want to add the, the size of our outside of our tube. If you remember from our measurement, it was 51 millimeters. To do that, we're going to create another circle. So we're going to head over here to the circle tool, click on circle, come over to the center, click on the center, and then we're going to drag while, while holding the left mouse button, drag, and then release. And now we have another circle that has been created. We have to now give this circle a size. To do that, once again, we head up to our dimension tool, click on the dimension tool. Our dimension tool now is highlighted in blue, which indicates that it's the active tool. Head over to our newly created circle, click on it, drag out, click again, and now we're going to give this the size of uh, 61 millimeters, which was the outside size of our hose. So 61, that gives us the outside of our hose. And then uh, what we're going to do next is we're going to select, on, uh, click on the check mark. So that concludes that shape. The next thing we want to do is we want to extrude this, uh, this outside collar. To do that, we head over to our extrude selection again, click on it, and it's telling us that there is nothing selected. What we're going to do is we're going to head over to this outside set of rings and click on them. This is going to select them, and we want our shape to be extruded about 20 millimeters. What we're going to do is we're going to head over here to where it says depth. We're going to type in 20. We're going to press enter, and then if you notice, it's highlighted in gray, and if we take and turn our model, and how you can turn the model is you can use these little arrows over here on the top right. You can just click it a little bit, and if you notice, it's created the 3D extrusion. So now this, this extrusion is complete. All we need to do now at this point is click on the check mark, and now the extrusion is complete. There are two ways to move your model around. You can use these arrows up here at the top, left and right. You can rotate using the rotation tool. And if you, another way to do it is you can uh, right-click on your mouse and then you can move your mouse around while right-clicking and that will move your model around as well. So you can move it up or down, left or right. It's, it's kind, of, uh, kind of weird to, to, to deal with it like this, but uh, you'll get the hang of it as you use it. All right, the next thing that we need to create is the inside sleeve. How we're going to create the inside sleeve is, how I found is the easiest way, is to, uh, I'm going to switch to, to the, the, the back side of this drawing. So how I'm going to do this is I'm going to use this cube up here on the corner, on the top, and I'm going to turn it, I'm going to click left, to click left, click left, to turn it until I can see the back. Now once I see the back, we're going to create another drawing, just like we did on the other side. We're going to create a sketch. So we're going to come up here to the, uh, sketch tool. We're going to click on sketch and now it's asking us to select the sketch plane. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the extrusion, the back side of the extrusion. So we're going to click on it and now it's given us our sketch box and again if we want to see the back side only in a two-dimensional view we can select our cube, click on the back side and it will show us now only the back side. What we need to do next is to create another circle. 
So for this circle, click on the circle box. Now our uh, circle is in blue, it indicates this is the current active tool. Head over to the center of your work plane, left click, and then while holding you drag out your circle and then release it and this circle is going to be the outside of our inside sleeve now if you remember our original measurement of the inside of the tube was 51 millimeter so what we're going to do is we're going to assign 51 millimeter to this outside sleeve which goes inside the tube so if the inside of the tube is 51 millimeter the sleeve that fits inside cannot be more than 51 millimeter otherwise it will not fit inside of the tube and if it's too small let's say 50 millimeter then it's going to be loose inside the tube we don't want that either so we want it the same size as the inside diameter of our tube so and how we're going to select this is we're going to come up here to the, oh, we're going to assign the size, excuse me. We're going to head up here to the dimensions tool, click on it. The tool is now blue, which indicates it's the active tool once again. And then we're going to click on our newly created circle, pull it out, and it's just click once and then move your mouse away and it will give you this, this uh, little size thing. And then left click again. And now it's going to allow us to put in there the size that we want to give to this circle. In this case, it's going to be 51 millimeter. Type in 51, press enter. And now we have the inside of our circle. We're completed now with the circle. What we want to do next is click on the checkbox. So now we're done with that sketch. Now what we want to do next is we want to extrude this uh, new circle. To do that, head up to the Extrude tool, click on it, and just like we did the first time, we need to select the uh, surface that we want on shape to extrude. So what we're going to do is we're going to head over to this, to this uh, inside circle, and if you notice, if we just move the mouse down and it only selects the inside, that's not what we want. If we move the mouse up and away, we'll get to a point that it will select the outside of the newly created circle and the inside circle, which is what we want. That means it's going to select both of those surfaces to extrude from. So if you've got both of them highlighted like this, click on it, and then uh, we're going to give it a length. Now, if, if we want, we can rotate our model a little bit more to the right so we can see that it's extruding. But what's happening here? it's extruding in the wrong direction. We want it to extrude the other way. To do this, all you need to do is head over to this little extrude box that's here and click on the arrow that says opposite direction. And now what it's gonna do is it's gonna extrude to the front. Uh, this, and this is what we want, okay? To complete our extrusion, I determined that the, the, a good length is 71 millimeter. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click in the depth box select 71 millimeter press the enter key and this now is giving us our inside sleeve once we're happy with the size go ahead and click the checkbox or oh, another thing you can do before i do that if you wanted to manually adjust this extrusion there's an arrow here once you put your mouse cursor over it and click and hold it you can move the extrusion in or out okay so we want ours to be 71 so i'm going to go ahead and Change this back to 71. And I'm going to click on the checkbox. So now our extrusion is complete. This is our, our part now. And if you want to get fancy, like I did, uh, I wanted to add an extra element. I didn't want this, this edge here to just be square. So what I decided to do is to uh, give it a, a round over. And to do this, what we're going to do, we're going to need to zoom in a little bit here. So scroll your wheel up so that we can get in close. And then remember what I said about holding down the middle mouse button. And then you can, while holding it down, you can drag it to move your shape closer to the center of the screen. 
So we're going to zoom in here. And what we want to do is I want to create a, uh, a round over on this edge. And to do this, we're going to use the tool that says fillet. And if you notice, it has kind of a round over shape here. So we're going to click on that tool. The next thing it's going to ask us is, hey, what do you want to round over? We got to select the surface that we want to round over. Now, the surface that I want to round over is, is this, this uh, outside edge. So I'm going to click on it. And once I click on it, if you see, it's trying to round over the edge. But 5 millimeters is too much of a round over because it's shortening the length of my shape. So if we take and we rotate this around a little bit more, you can see that it's it's too much it's too much of a round over. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change this to uh two millimeters because I know our, our sleeve thickness is two millimeters and that'll give us a round over from the outside line right to the inside edge and it'll be a, a nice even round over. It's not gonna change our dimension it's just going to give us a nice round over okay so that looks good to me I'm going to go ahead and click the checkbox and now I have a completed round over if you want to continue that theme to other parts of your model you can do the same thing so we're gonna click on the fillet tool once again and this time we're gonna select the outside sleeve edge so it's this outer ring here once it's highlighted you click on it Again, it's going to try to default with 5 millimeter, but we're going to change that again to 2 millimeters. Click the checkbox. And now we have a completed part. Okay, so guys, this is exactly the part that I just finished uh, creating. We just recreated it again from scratch in OnSpace. What you want to do at this point, if you already have a 3D printer, and you're familiar with working with STL files, what we're going to do is we're going to export this shape into an XDL file. How we do that is head down to where it says Part Studio at the bottom, and you're going to right-click on it, and the bottom choice says Export. So once you highlight it, you're going to left-click on Export, and we're going to give this a name. So in this case, we're going to call it Sleeve, uh, vacuum sleeve and I've already created it so I'm gonna I'm gonna call this one uh, test click on OK oh, it's gonna download it for you so here's the the file downloaded it's gonna go to wherever your default download folder is and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and go to the folder and show you what it looks like uh, in Cura, which is the software that we're going to use to 3D print the model. So let's go ahead and we'll click, and it's going to open our Cura model. It may take a minute to load up. All right, so here's our newly created uh, object inside of Cura. And I have a very small print space. My, my printer is not very big. And what I like to do is I like to keep the flat surfaces, the biggest flat surface on the bottom, and let the printer work its way up to the smaller surfaces up uh, vertically, as opposed to trying to create the shape uh, like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate the object uh, in Cura. Oh, and by the way, to, to rotate, if you're not familiar with Cura, you've never used it before, if you want to rotate your model, it works the same as on shape. Uh, so you right-click your mouse button, and, and while you're holding it, if you slide your mouse left and right or up and down, it moves your cube around so you can see the model from different angles. So uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to click on our object. So you're going to head over. So you're not pressing on anything yet. Head over to your object and then left click. And then this is going to give you action, uh, arrow directions if you want to move it up or down or forward or back. 
We're not going to do that. What we want to do is we want to rotate it. So if you head over to your tools on the left, you're going to see that one of them has a picture of kind of an arrow going around the shape. That's your rotation tool. So click on that. And then that's going to give us a series of arrows that go all over the place. So if you, again, right click on your mouse button and drag it right and left, you can see based on which one of these uh, rotation directions are available to you, which way you want to move the object. The red one that's up here is going to move it, it's just going to stand it straight up. So I want to rotate it to stand it up. So I'm going to click on it with the left mouse button, and then I'm going to move my mouse to the right. And as I move my mouse to the right, it will rotate my object. You see how it's rotating the object? And once I have my object rotated, then I can just let go of it, and it's going to raise it up and put it on the bottom surface of my printing space. So now I have it put exactly where I need it to be put. The next thing that I want to do is, if you notice, it has a print time of 2 hours and 49 minutes. I have it set currently to draft mode. And if we wanted to edit this, we can just click on the little edit tool. It's going to open a little drop-down box. So if, if you just click up here on the where it says profile, if you click on draft, you'll notice there's different choices here. If you wanted to, this to be a nice, smooth, even, high-quality printed part, you would select either ultra-fine or fine for your uh, part detail. In this case, we want it fast and dirty, and we want a bunch of bumpy surfaces. That way it can add uh, friction, making the part not easily to, to come off your tube. So I'm going to click on draft. There's draft. It's already selected, selected to, to brim. And what the brim tool does is, let me click over here to preview so you can see what the brim tool does. Scroll in a bit. All right. <clears throat> so if you notice, there's this little line here around the bottom. It's going to create kind of like a little circle, which will clear out the nozzle on the 3D printing head and get it ready for printing. Sometimes when it first starts to print, the nozzle will either have uh, junk stuck to it or the filament hasn't started coming out properly yet. There may be a space uh, which keeps the filament from coming out consistently. So creating this little circle outside before it starts drawing has worked really well for me. And the way you get that to work is uh, once you're inside your profile, you can use this little slider up and down to get to the part where you talk where it talks about build plate adhesion and at this point you'll have different choices one of them is skirt one of them is brim and if you and if you change the different ones it'll show you what it does so brim means that there there is uh, a series of circles that will uh, be around the base of your project they'll be actually fused to your project that you have to peel off if you don't like the brim, you can take the brim off. I don't like to deal with the brim personally. Uh, but if you're having a, a, a part that's having a hard time sticking or is uh, for whatever reason lifting or coming off, the brim may help you to keep it stuck to the uh, adhesion plate. Another choice would be a raft. So the raft is a similar similar thing, only thicker. And then uh, you have none if you don't want any type of surface on the bottom of your printed project. You can do it this way, but uh, keep in mind that the, the first time that the machine starts extruding, it may have an issue. I'm going to leave it on skirt. And, uh, and then that's it. So now from this point, what you want to do is you want to click on where it says save to a file. And as you can see, the print time is 2 hours and 49 minutes to make this project. Click Save to File. If you're using this, a printer like mine, which is a Monoprice 3, this uh, printer uses a, a G-code. So I'm going to leave my file type as G-code. I'm going to save it. And now that G-code is saved. All right, guys, let's head over to the 3D printer, and I'll show you guys how to load that file on it and print it.
Here's my little printer. Now, mine has a uh, SD card. Most of them do come with some kind of an SD card. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to eject my little SD card. I do that by just depressing it, pulling it out. And then I'm going to load my file that I just uh, created in Cura to this SD card. So I'm going to show you what that process is. Now, guys, I use this little uh, adapter for my laptop. So I just put my little... SD card in here. If I can find the little slot for it, there it goes. I'll just press the little thing in. And then I'm gonna it'll pop up on my computer and I just drag the file to it. After our card is inserted and the computer recognizes the card, all we need to do is drag our G code file over to it. Once it's copied on the card, it just needs to be ejected. Okay, now we got our file on our micro SD card. We'll take that thing out and then return it over to our printer. Here we are back at the printer. And all we're going to do is just insert our little micro SD card back in there. Turn our printer on. Once the printer's on, select the print button. Roll your wheel down to vacuum sleeve test G-code. Click your little wheel. And that's it. Now just wait for the printer to warm up and start printing the project.